All right, I want to talk to you for a moment about retaining and developing your workforce. It's hard. Recruiting is hard. Retaining top employees is hard. Then you've got onboarding, payroll, benefits, time and labor management. You need to take care of your workforce, and you can only do this successfully if you commit to transforming your employee experience. This is where ISOF comes in. They empower you to be successful. We've seen it with a number of companies that we've worked with, and this is why we partner with them here at WorkDefined. We trust them, and you should too. Check them out at isolvedhcm.com. A Libert Seguros agora é Yellow. Tudo aquilo que já era bom continua igual. Excelência e proximidade permanecem como nossa essência. Porque não é uma mudança, é uma evolução. A Yellow está sempre em sintonia com você. É liberdade com segurança. A melhor experiência acessível a todos os clientes. Iluminando cada passo da sua jornada. Deixe essa luz iluminar seu caminho. E ela um seguradora. Seguro para viver livre. Consulte seu corretor. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ryan Leary, William Tinkup here with The Barf. This is the look at the week that was, so you can be prepared for the week that is. William... There is another person on the screen for those that are watching. This is exciting. Video. And she's on video. We just learned a, a really interesting fact, and you don't use video. Sorry. I don't. Yes, this is Katie Achille from the Devon Group, uh, here to crash the party this week. Yeah. Um, and yes, on video for once. Um, wow. I, wow. I am a big believer in this thing called the phone that up until <laughs> five years ago, everybody was totally okay with. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, you don't need to see me at all times. No, so no. what have you done for the last five years? Just yeah, talk, talk, talk. talk. No phone, no listened. video. Listened, yeah, listened, <laughs> yeah. listened, and talked. And uh, you know, you know, sometimes I hop on, but very rarely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this has been a hell of a week. We've had a lot happen this week, right? We've had <laughs> the culmination of the elections, which we don't need to get into. We don't need to <sighs> run down that path. Just... Oh, I will say. I would say 90% of the calls we've had this week have been ther therapy calls. Mm -hmm. We didn't actually yeah. get to the topics we needed to talk. And then we're talking like recordings too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it was just one of those weeks. So anyhow, Katie went swimming in the ocean last night in New Jersey, which is pretty awkward because- In November. In yeah. November. That's insane. Yeah. 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 So we, we're, we're going to have a little different format this week. A little different format. We're not just going to jump into all the news and acquisitions and all that stuff. Katie's here for a reason. She is going to be talking about some cool stuff and some findings and some trends and stuff like that that she's uh, been following and some recent travels. So uh, let's kick us off. William, you want to do the honors? No, Katie, go. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make it not super awkward for her. It's not awkward. No, She's good. it's fine. She I'm it. used to you two. Um, yeah. We've done this before. Uh, so uh, I'm here hot, to talk about events. Potato. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here to talk about events. You know, we've reached um, almost the end of the fall conference season, I'll almost say. I know there's a few, so few more coming up. Um, but for the most part, I'd say we're like 85, 90% done through the conference season, which means... Um, everybody's trying to figure out what 2025 looks like and, you know, what conferences they want to be mm. at and how much they want to spend and oh, all yeah. of that. Um, so I came to talk to you guys. You've been at a lot of the shows recently um, to compare notes and see see what y'all are thinking. I was shocked to – and this is talent acquisition vendors at um, Unleash, Transform, and HR Tech. All of them – are just pulling out of conferences next year. Wow. Like, and I Entirely. won't name names, just, just no, those conferences. Mm -hmm. Okay. They want to go and try and find the talent acquisition buyer, mm. which I don't, you know, that's mm -hmm. pretty hard to find. Uh, there's not a lot of, you know, great events for those folks, especially leadership mm -hmm. whom they want to sell to. And they just, they're kind of fed up with going yeah. to the more, HR tech related, which is great, mm -hmm. work tech related, a broad swath of HR, of which town acquisition is a, a spoke. Mm -hmm. And they're just like DQ and conferences. Yeah, uh, overwhelmingly. Big, 
Yeah, it's insane. I'm it's not like... going to lie. I'm seeing a similar, similar from what I'm hearing from my clients. Um, yeah. And mine are not all talent acquisition right. tech. I represent right. broadly HR tech companies, a few other verticals as well. Um, what I'm hearing is budgets for 2025 are flat. Um, so those big shows, yeah, are not being prioritized in the same way they would have been. Right. right. Um, the folks that are going are thinking about downsizing their booths, you know, 10 by 10, mm -hmm. 10 by 20, maybe. Yep. Um, and yeah, they're looking at more of these either bespoke events or they're looking at um, just shorter events. You know, I've been to a few recently. I went to um, the conference boards people 2030 last week in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, it's a day and a half. So right. as opposed to three, four, five days out of the office, you know, that's an easier you could just do one full day and call it um, or you could do, you know, the overnight. But that seemed to get a lot more of those decision makers out than I think we're seeing with the big yeah. traditional conferences. Um, so that's one one sort of anecdote I can share. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, in terms of you mentioned TA Tech specifically, which events do you think are under consideration for those vendors? Um, Access, I... talent? Well, yeah, Erie. Uh, Erie, yep. I, I think is kind of a kind of a standard. There, I think the, mo the most of the folks that we're that we've talked to at the shows, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's everyone's. I mean, this is just kind of a age old thing. When you're at a show, let's say you're at Transform and you walk, and you're talking to a vendor, they're always disappointed in traffic. Mm -hmm. Like always. that's it. Doesn't matter if there's mm -hmm. fourteen thousand people at their booth. They're going to be disappointed in the traffic. However, this this year was felt different conversations because mm -hmm. it's like these aren't just the yeah, others traffic. These aren't the right people. That's a big. I heard that too about um. You know, I was speaking with a marketing lead from a TA tech uh company the other day. That's a client, and they had gone into HR tech thinking it was going to be like their big show of the year. Right. And then they had gone yeah. to Gartner Reimagine thinking it was going to be a terrible show for them, and it actually ended up being the opposite. They yeah. got not just more marketing qualified leads at Gartner Reimagine than at HR Tech. They got like tenfold yeah. the yeah. number of qualified it, leads. So that's it, a really – when you're measuring ROI, and William, I know you and Ryan and I have talked about this repeatedly with events. You know, that's – when you go to your CFO with the budget <laughs> and they say, you know, where's the ROI on this? Yeah. If yeah. you're comparing 60 leads to 600 – um. You know, no. that's a very big difference. So I, I also think it's 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 a matter of how the company's looking at the event itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to HR tech or why yeah. are you going to Unleash or why are you going to Sherm? Brand what is versus the goal? demand. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And and we've William and I we've had these conversations since the, you know, we'll call it September, early October mm -hmm. time frame with a lot of the marketing and events teams who were very upset, even on the floor. They were talking yeah. with us and they were upset and they all, it depends on who you talk to, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they come back and say, look, we no longer look at these as demand gen shows. These they, are they never shows. should have. They never but should have. Right. Yeah. Well, these are, and that was. You know. Right. These are, these are partner shows. Partner we're seeing shows, our yeah. customers. We're mm -hmm. seeing our partners. We're looking around to see what new partners are out there. So for that, it's great. from that respect, Analysts. fantastic. Great yeah. consultants. But do you need a 40 by 40 booth yeah. to do that? That's, plus the that's activation, plus the party, mm -hmm. plus the exactly. Because all of this starts to add up. Um, oh, and yeah. I know, yeah. you know, I had another, again, anecdotal conversation with one of the analysts recently who said that they were talking to a CEO at one of the big shows this fall. And um, the CEO, they threw a party and they looked around the room and they were like, I know everyone in here, right? you know, like, <laughs> why am I out. throwing a party for who are essentially like my friends, quote unquote, <laughs> right. you know, that's not, there is no yeah. ROI on that other than, no. you know, we continue to be friends, but <laughs> right. um, I shouldn't have to feel like I'm, I'm buying the good. Right. Thanks for the liquor. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't we could have spend... just gone around the, the corner. You know? Yeah. You don't yeah. need, you don't need to spend 30 grand on a bar tab yeah. for someone to talk about you to someone else that they're already talking to them about you. For. The parties, other thing, parties and dinners are, I, yeah. are are tricky. The after hour stuff yes. are tricky because everyone leading up to six months leading up to it, 
it's invite only. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. special. You have to be qualified. And about three days before, they panic. Every yeah. single yeah. one of them panic and like, tell your friends. I don't know. Get some homeless. Well, put flyers in yeah, there. But, that, but, then, but then that's when Ryan doesn't get allowed in. Like what happened at the greenhouse I know, party at HR Tech. I know, I know, I know. I know. Um, and I love, yeah. we love greenhouse. We love. Yeah, no, they, no, they, that was a very totally, successful. That was yeah. an overly successful yes, party. It was they, a great um, party. I, I, totally I enjoyed so, it. Totally yeah, no, I, I didn't make it this year, but um, that it's, it's historically been one of my yeah. favorite events, and you know, Dina and her team do a great yeah. job. That's right. Send me a sweatshirt, um, and I'll be just as happy. No. <laughs> um, Ryan, Ryan forgot the first rule of entering a club. Oh, I know. That acts it's, like you own it. Hell yeah. 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 Like like literally. I mean, yeah. I had the the sash from from HR Tech, and the I had my badge on, threw on my backwards, and I I talked to the the hostess. She goes, "It's full." I'm saying, "Oh, so we need to wait for some people to come out?" And she goes, "No, no, no. It's they're not letting anybody else in." We're at and capacity. She, and she turned her head for a second, and I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I've been yeah. here before. I was a little <laughs> further back and I didn't make it in. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. Next so the topic. other the other thing, <laughs> events wise, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like I said, no, I didn't make it that day. I had had a very long day running the press room. Uh, yes. um, but, uh, you know, the other thing I wanted to point out about events that I've heard and I've heard this um, again, I went to People 2030 um, HR Tech. I was also at Hacker Ranks um, AI Skills Summit at the Plaza Hotel mm -hmm. in New York a couple weeks ago. So I had the chance to, um, you know, from the attendee perspective, talk to some of the folks at the end of the sessions at um, the conference board and Hacker Ranks events. And, you know, one thing that popped up is everyone is with when it comes to the content, there seems to be something that's missing right now yeah. um, in these sessions. And it's the how. I was in a session last week about skills-based hiring. You know, everyone has heard that term. It's been yeah, yeah. beaten over all of our heads I've all got a year. Tattoo. Yeah, yeah it, and it was a session with a very big American company. They yep. might be based in Bentonville, Arkansas, um, and they were talking about <laughs> they were talking about you know their their approach to skills-based hiring. Session was thirty minutes long. They talked for like twenty-seven of them, which left one time one you know one question. <laughs> and the, this person got up at the big at the front of the room and said, "You know, I think it's great that you've adopted skills based hiring. Can you tell me how?" Yeah. And right. the gentleman on stage stood there, and uh, this that's is a where great his, question. His PR team would have been going nuts, and um, he, you know, stammered <laughs> a little bit, and he could give one example. And his one example was that. <laughs> um, they are taking associates and putting them on the transportation track. And that is because mm. they have the largest private fleet in the U S true that. So right. that's one, one example that was not mentioned well, anywhere just... in the presentation. So yes. we need, we need con event content that actually, it goes back to that case mm -hmm. study model yeah. where, you know, the attendees are learning how your technology works. Well, not it's, why it's, you should buy it, not what benefits you're putting in your marketing copy, how it actually works. Well, it's, 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 uh, it gets to the essence of why, what is a conference? What is it? What, is it, mm -hmm. what are you trying to achieve right. during a conference? Yeah. And most of the conference from Sherm all the way across, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. it's not just a U.S. thing. Uh, most conferences are designed to attract practitioners via mm -hmm. content and then buy by attracting those practitioners, they attract vendors that can sell to those practitioners. Yep. But the, 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 uh, Ryan will use a fishing metaphor. The bait to get people to come to the conferences is getting less effective. Mm -hmm. So, yep. and which, which impacts everybody, because yes. if you don't bring mm -hmm. in the practitioners, it ripples to the vendors. They're like, so, okay, this isn't good for us because we can't sell to anyone. Which is mm -hmm. whole whole goal for them to be there is to sell. Is to yeah. sell. So is 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 the solution then not so much content? Is it taking a taking a page out of other industries like CES or something like mm -hmm. that, where you're going there and you're just getting Shop. thousands of vendors. You're shopping. You're seeing yeah. what is new. You're seeing what's hot. I mean, HR tech's not sexy like that. I get it. But mm -hmm. is there a page we can take out of all these? You go to the fix the, the fishing expos that you know they'll they'll put twenty thousand people in them. 
yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. do demos. They'll you know they'll yeah. go through lessons There's no and sessions workshops. You can attend though to find no, the... out which lure you should be using. Yeah, oh, which... no, you know, they do. They <laughs> the do, hunting and they're... gun shows here in Texas are the same. Yeah, like no they're... one goes to the content. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They go to the expo. They just walk around. Yeah, but but they but they are the ones that do have them. They're mm-hmm. interactive. Like you're actually right. you're you're doing like things. workshops. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, I practitioners think... still need workshops. They still need the to how. be hands on. Which yeah, is, the how. Gets, the how. It gets back yeah. to the how. It's but the small, how. Less, less. Content, I, well, that's what I think by. we're seeing. I think to you know kind of bring the events conversation, um, you know, full circle. I think what we're seeing for 2025 is if budgets are going to remain somewhat the same Mm -hmm. as they were in 2024 and you know hr tech marketing teams need to make decisions i think there's going to be less priority on the big shows Mm -hmm. and we're going to start to see people trying some of the smaller shows um you know there are other players in the space who you know I'll, i'll use from day one as an example they've been around for a number of years they're starting to make more moves Oh, yeah. They're attracting bigger brands, um, both on their content side and mm-hmm. the attendee side. I talked to a friend who went to their event in Brooklyn last week, and she was naming, you know, CHROs and VPs of talent acquisition that she was sitting next to in sessions. Yeah. And it was, it was, again, it was from 830 to 530 yeah. in Brooklyn. You're you know, there are other out. events. Mm-hmm. There are other events are in Chicago, Miami. They're in these big cities. So they're easy for people who are based in those markets or, you know anywhere near them to take the train in for a day, you know, yeah. and then you're back in the office the following well, the, day. So I think the, we're going to see more of that in twenty. The road trip model, the mm-hmm. dinner trip model, those things have worked uh, forever. Like yes. they, they've mm-hmm. never not worked. Mm-hmm. Like you just drop into a city, take down the nicest restaurant. This goes yep. way back to uh, what was CLO? Oh, it was Pinstripe. Sue, mm-hmm. Sue Marks at, mm-hmm. at Pinstripe. The first time I went to one of those was in Cambridge, she noticed mm-hmm. on Foursquare that I was in Boston, and she invited me to this dinner. I'm like, well, all right, cool. Get there, and there's 12 people. Yep. It's her, me, and 10 global heads of, of talent. Mm-hmm. And we didn't talk about work. We literally drank and ate. Yeah. And it was just one of these bits. Uh, it was a real fancy restaurant. Anyhow, so, like, that's all we did. And I went to a bunch of them afterwards. I'm like, this is a, this is a great model. I think like, we're going to see more and more of that in addition to this, the shorter conference format. Yep. I think we're going to mm-hmm. see more of those dinners. We're also, I mean, the user conferences are making a big return. Um, yeah, we saw that are. in yeah. 2024. And, and analyst really days. Good. They analyst are really days good. are coming back. The, um, you know, pre-COVID where, you know, all of all of y'all were getting wined and dined uh, yeah, as part of these user conferences. I think that's, it's going to yeah. be more of, more of yeah. what we see in 2025. Well, so. I'll tell you what we've we've been to two user conferences mm-hmm. in the last month, right? So, yep. I mean, we've been to the ISOP ones; they kick yep. ass, right? and they, they had to do, pivot, didn't they? Because they, of the they, hurricane, they did. Yeah, that they team did, is yeah. amazing, so, though. So they, are. they did an amazing job <laughs> on the pivot. Yeah. but the, they pivoted early. Yes. they did. They, they did. were smart on yeah, Saturday did. before mm-hmm. it actually we knew which way it was yeah. going to go. They mm-hmm. pivoted early. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, but but. Their their events are chock full of learning. Mm-hmm. It's great. They put a couple hundred people in there, and they do their own thing. They don't need to impress the world, right? Mm-hmm. Indeed, another one. I mean, yep. we were just at Indeed Future Works, and I, I mean, look, they're not paying their attendees to go. They're not paying yeah. them uh-uh. to say great things, and they were just overwhelmed and floored with Excited. the content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, like, I think, and that one actually coincided with HR Tech this year. I so I know there was a it little did. bit. Yeah, From the press and analyst perspective, it was a little tough it, because people it needed be, to divide it their time. Next year, they're in different weeks. Are they? they are mm-hmm. uh, a week apart. But, okay. but, but there's uh, always some overlap, you know, that yeah. time of year. But Yeah, yeah. And I know I know there's overlap, and I know it's not contentious. But that just goes to show, if, if HR tech and some of these larger shows really, mm-hmm. truly mattered to the vendors, they would know when the event is, and they wouldn't mm. plan their event. Well, some ahead of the conferences time. they'll they'll publish like five or six years. HR of Tech plans out. I know three years. I think on, if you yeah, go to the I Unleash think, website, yeah, if you go to the HR Tech website, mm-hmm. they've got their future dates because they're in multi year contracts with their right. um, event spaces typically. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, though, I think I think twenty twenty five is going to be a very different event landscape from twenty twenty four. You know, I, pending no global pandemics or things that I can't forecast from where think, I'm sitting here I in November. I think the way that, that, uh, the way that I'll think of that, Katie, is flat is the new up. 
for mm, 25. That is, I'll just, don't I'll say just that. Basic, well, it, it's not a bad thing. Let's no. see, they'll have the same budget. They'll just have to rearrange. Peanut butter what, spreading is what one of my marketing leads <laughs> keeps saying, that that's yeah. her goal for 2025 is, is she's peanut, peanut butter right. spreading her budget. Get it to the know, edges, to make baby. Sure that, to make sure that the brand is in, you know, the most impactful yeah. places it can be without losing footing at, you know, some of the, the bigger shows where I yeah, think right. there's, you know, there's some FOMO too that um, the big shows have cultivated over the years. hundred percent. So. If you're not there, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Uh, um, we've had several vendors through the years where that's, that's come up. It's like, if you're not there in some way or another, now that's the, that's the question. Do you need the 40 by 40 or can you get away with a 10 by 10? Mm-hmm. You're there, but you're just not spending as right. much as, yeah. as on a 40 by 40 and you're not doing a party and you're not doing a dinner. You're just, you're going. And you're not flying the whole team out to be in the forty by right. forty because you got to make it look crowded. Um, yeah. There's a lot That's that right. goes into all of it. Um, you know, one of the other things I wanted to mention, um, you know, as we wrap up the events conversation, and Ryan, you're you're involved in this. I just wanted to get a quick plug in, and that's. Um, we have a program open right now for HR tech marketing teams called the Clear Communicator oh, yeah. Awards. Mm-hmm. Um, this is HR tech marketing teams' opportunity to uh, submit themselves for a little praise. We know how hard y'all work um, to uh, differentiate yourselves in a very crowded market. Um, yeah. So there's more information at the Devon PR website, which is Devon, devon uh, in the news section. Yeah. And there's the submission form is super short. What's your uh, deadline? What are uh, we the doing deadline is The deadline is Wednesday, November 20th. There okay. are three categories. It's mm. campaign, event, or brand. And um, again, it's a super short submission, and they're free because it's the inaugural year. Um, hey. I am not a judge, but Ryan is one of our judges, um, As he should being be. an expert on all things HR tech marketing. Um, yes. So I do encourage anyone who's listening um, who is on an HR tech marketing team to check that. I out. love that. It will be fun. Yeah. I would then, be a then, bad PR person if I didn't get that <laughs> plug you, in, so. The best part about that is then you can say you're award-winning software. Exactly. Who doesn't want to be award-winning? You award-winning. Know, as opposed to leading. <laughs> award winning is mu- it just sounds I want to be award just... winning one day yeah. I want an award Give me I want an award this year and you don't know how quickly I changed that LinkedIn profile <laughs> I yeah award win- award winning PR specialist yes Great. something like that and the award is actually sitting on my mantle because you know what <laughs> it's the closest I'm ever going to get to an Oscar did I just make William do a spit take you did. it was close that's you an award close. win right there, there you, go. you we'll said it was you on your desk that one. yeah <laughs> nice nice good right. luck we ready to uh, to break <laughs> into some news let's do some news are you ready let's do it we're keeping right. Katie on Katie's going to help oh. us give some insights here alright let me uh, let me start with Boeing so two things happened with Boeing this week of, of note one is the machinist the the strike they're set to mm-hmm. return to work after voting for a contract with a 38% uh, increase in pay. I kind of feel like they should just find new people to work there. We haven't had good Dude, luck with these Where people. are the robots? Doesn't that go against retention, though? <laughs> is it guessing, retention but... a thing? Boeing is uh, – Boeing is okay, so the other story, in the same week, mind you, they dismantled their global diversity, equity, and inclusion departments mm-hmm. – the DEI uh, office, if you will, will be combined with another human re- <laughs> with another human resources team focused on the talent or employee experience. So they thought the strike news would like they could just slip that in. I don't real see quick us, on. That's, uh... So that's that's exactly mm. what I, I. First of all, you can look um, the strike ending. You can find out on the Wall Street Journal, and you can find more about the DEI on Reuters. So mm. if you want to see those things, so. Initially, kind of, I, I thought like, okay, is is this this going to sound like a like some type of conspiracy theory? But are these stories related? And and why I asked both of you is like thirty eight percent raise. It, that's that cost has to come from somewhere. So you think it came from the DEI department? Or are, they, are they cutting the people? Or are they just moving people into different roles? Well, uh, they said this, the the word dismantled. <laughs> That does sound like a um, a synonym for layoffs. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. if they said moving or dispersed or you know, well, they're another dismantling word. the office, not the people. Yeah, I think not they might the come with the furniture, though. Uh, yeah, you know, mm. if you dismantle the desk, you're getting rid of the legs. Boeing True. has dis. That was a 
this was Reuters. Boeing has dismantled its global diversity, equity, and inclusion departments. Mm. <laughs> I need, I need to go to like layoffs at FYI and see if Boeing is listed. Uh, yeah. Again, I don't know. It's causation or correlation. I don't know if these things are even in the same thing. However, both of them happened this week. So All there right. you go. Well, there we go. All right. Well, yeah. U.S. employers add a measly 12,000 jobs in October. This is the lowest since 2020. My so God. we added 12,000 jobs in October. The expectation was 100,000 jobs. Yeah, there's 12,000 people in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So like... <laughs> they were a little, a little <laughs> under that. Unemployment, wow. though, has remained at 4.1, right? Um, okay. But the number of unemployed rose to 7 million. So huh. we have some movement. Now, here's I – don't, I don't – I don't – I mean, all right. You guys need to school me on this. Right. The reason – the, the the one of the reasons, one of the driving factors in this is the hurricanes and the major <laughs> strikes contributed to this subdued growth. I do not believe that. Well, uh, when someone's on strike, they still have, they're so employed. Yeah. So that, that those numbers stay constant and turns out hurricanes happen from <laughs> May to November mm-hmm. every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I. I think that's... there were back to back ones in October. However, there were, there were, yeah. But uh, did that help? Did yeah, that... but that wasn't across the country. <laughs> no, it was only a specific. Yeah. It's the southeast, yeah. you know. It's yeah. only the southeast that was impacted by that. Yeah, so, um, but it was bad, no doubt. I'm not. No, yeah, not yeah, saying no, that not that diminishing that wasn't bad. the, the impact diminishing. of the hurricanes. Um, how many jobs were added in September? Do you know that? I do that? not know that. Do not no. know that. No, but um, it was it was in the hundred. It, it was it, it was, it was over, yeah. It was just, yeah. It was oh, well over a hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, if they're not going to give more context, then hurricanes their we're numbers. Gonna, we're going to stay behind hurricanes <laughs> and, and strikes. Uh, hurricanes and strikes and, strikes. and, strikes. and we'll, we'll throw so, in elections just for the hell of it. Uh, you know, why you not? Know. Why yeah. not? If I were BLS, though, I might be concerned. I there would be go. too. I'm, I would be. I would be absolutely getting my resume correct. Update him. All righty. So this is from Bloomberg. Equity is the most triggering word in the DEI acronym. So hmm. some companies are looking to rebrand diversity efforts without the equity to tamp down potential backlash. Writes Johnny C. Taylor of Sharp. No, <laughs> he he doesn't like diversity. So this is this hmm. is the bit, right? So at one point, this is but probably why the height. Yeah, that's so why my... is equity the most triggering, and who says? The, uh, this again, we can go on Bloomberg and find out exactly where where they're coming from. However, if you go back to the height of probably the pandemic, everyone was talking about diversity, equity, equality, inclusion, and belonging. Mm-hmm. Five terms. And Sherm, Johnny, distanced itself from diversity. To just inclusion. That's why mm-hmm. the conference is called inclusion and just mm-hmm. let's back away from diversity and let's just focus on inclusion. Now we find out that equity is under attack. It's triggering. So I think, you know, again, I think there's dark days ahead for anybody that cares mm-hmm. about any of these initiatives. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the next farm, uh, next four years are going to be difficult because I think they're going to be under attack. So whatever you call it, which got me to think about Animal Farm. Do y'all remember reading Animal Farm? George Orwell. Do you, do you remember yeah. this? When the pigs started changing the mm-hmm. the, uh, the words, right? So one of my favorites out of that bit is for all animals are equal. Changes to all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. <laughs> <laughs> well, so well, so that was go. that's what it reminds me of. I'm like, they were just changing words. But it's this is serious. Like, mm-hmm. like yeah, we is, have we is. have friends that work in this in this space oh, yeah. and care deeply about this stuff, and it's like they're going to be under those folks that we care about are going to be under attack, like yeah. absolutely under attack for the next four years at least, and already you know? have been for this year. And it's yeah, it's we're at the beginning, not the end. Um, is hundred percent. No, you know. Well, I, uh... There we go. Okay, I've got one here for a All company right, called go. Bolt. Bolt drivers win a U- in the UK tribunal uh, that they had a claim uh, for workers' employment status. Uh, so Classification? 
classification, right? So shit's mm-hmm. getting complicated now. This is yep. going to cross over, I think, into the U.S. as well. Uh, so let's start off with the fact that employers may need to reassess everything they're doing with how they're hiring or working with drivers, gig workers, delivery, on-demand apps, all of that. Okay. Right. So Drivers for Bolt, which is – so if you don't know, is a ride-sharing app. It's a, they call it a ride-hailing app, right? I guess they're still throwing their hands up. Careful. Um, in the U- <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. 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 In Germany, they yeah. call it something different. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Well, that just went dark. <laughs> Next story. Um, so they've been legally recognized as workers, not oh, gig workers, not condor workers, entitling them to benefits and pay and a guaranteed minimum wage. So this whole bit, they have 150,000 clients, uh, Bolt does. They have 150,000 clients, and they've been ordered. This could potentially mean that they need to pay back 200 million pounds, which is about be, 260 would it, would it million. Would it be rich? Um, from yeah, the start of is, the lawsuit or something is, like that? This is, I believe right. so, yeah. That's, so that's $259 Ooh. million in U.S. dollars for Ooh. those like me that can't do that conversion. Yeah, do the calculator. Did you ask Chet GPT to tra- translate that for you? No, the article did that for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pounds. Kudos, Pounds. To that, kudos to that journalist, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they did that. So <laughs> that's pretty crazy because we, we've seen this a lot in the U.S. They haven't actually gone this distance. Yeah. The minimum wage thing, well, first of all, you start with uh, all drivers, let's say Uber and Lyft, all drivers have to have uh, background checks. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was a that was a fight. All, mm-hmm. all background direct, uh, drivers have to have fingerprints. You mm-hmm. know, so, okay, all that stuff. And then there was a fight to then be, for them to become employees, but I think that's been pretty much squashed up till now. For now, uh, yeah. Up till now, now. Up till now? DoorDash has... Begin last year, they began to change how they offer jobs to the drivers, the, the delivery drivers. Right. You have an option. You can take a guaranteed minimum per hour or you can do a per delivery. Oh. I don't know what that means in terms of what Play I'm selecting versus not, but you get to choose. Well, right? they just so, give you the higher number. Oh, that would make sense for, for the driver <laughs> why do I have anyway. To, why do I have to choose? <laughs> well, actually, no, I think I think it does. It gives you – so I think the minimum at the time I, – I think it, it's different in each area. But yeah. it's like $14 you know, an hour, say. You're guaranteed 14 plus your tips. Or if you go okay. per ride in an hour, maybe you only get you know, could be $10. five dollars a ride, or it could right. be yeah, yeah. So you're, you're guaranteed, we're... yeah. So they're guaranteeing you that minimum. Uh, and what we're going to it. see, at least in the first two years of this election, is pro business. Mm-hmm. It's going to be yeah. extremely pro business. So yeah. anything that you think would be that would happen uh, under a regime It'll like this, after the midterms, it might happen after the midterms right do you think we're going to see less of like the fractional work i don't because that's been such a big trend no, this don't. year i don't no. think that i don't think that will change because i think that's based on the people wanting to work a, 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 mm-hmm. a, a, yeah. a certain way mm-hmm. so i think that like like they I'll say, that's been trickling down you know from right like, c-suite to yeah. I other think employment I, classifications so i was kind of right. wondering yeah. if we were seeing kind of the end of the employee or approaching I, I, you know the end I, of the employee but you know, i, I think we're gonna different administration R- now rto yeah i think i think it, it will we'll, we'll, we'll see soon enough mm-hmm. when the job market comes back to where it's a candidate driven market at this right. point at that point if the people who who swear by these gig jobs and you know all the fractional work if they hold true to their word Mm -hmm. if there's ample jobs and candidates can go get jobs and they can be guaranteed a salary of one hundred and twenty thousand, are they going to work five gig jobs to get Mm -hmm. to that that salary right and have to manage all their own stuff i think that's when we'll i don't think it's gonna be anytime soon but we'll that's Mm -hmm. i think when we'll see either the trend's gonna stick or it's gonna fall off after the midterms after yeah. the midterms. After, <laughs> after the midterms. All right, let me uh, – this is a New York story, New York Times. So librarians across the country face a burnout epidemic as their jobs increasingly require them act as a de facto mental health or re- emergency response workers mm-hmm. uh, to patrons 
that are experiencing hardships like homelessness and addiction and mental illness. So the, the first thing, because I, when I was at Bama, I worked at two libraries the whole time I was there for three years. I worked at the general library and I worked at the medical library. So I had two jobs. They're both part-time, you know, student jobs, but I could study and I loved it. I love being around uh, librarians because they're just smart. They, they can find shit. <laughs> so it was like, I loved being, uh, and you know, it was also just a fun job because I could study while I was there that those folks that I was around back then, they would not fare well in this environment of homeless addiction and mental health. So the first thing I thought of is deuces, different job. I didn't sign up for this shit. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Now, secondly, I think it made me think of sociology majors in college. There's only so many sociology jobs available on a given year, in a given year after a graduation. There's only so many of them. Most people stay, if they get a job, uh, they stay forever. They stay to death. So if if you blend sociology with a little bit of library science, you could have an absolute wonderful career path because you already have the skills of sociology and the skills of library science. So there is a silver lining, I guess, but mm-hmm. you're going to lose, they're going to lose a lot of these librarians that have been around for a while. They didn't sign up for that. I mean, you're also assuming libraries are going to be kept open Good point. and that there's going to be funding mm-hmm. um, yeah. for those Point taken. You know, I think that's the bigger point is they're not going to have a job anyway. So, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Boom. I'm just just saying they're librarians. I mean, how many books are you reading? I thought I was being harsh, Ryan. No, like like a little duck hunting. Here we go. Look, look, there's three people on screen. Only one of us has books. Well, that's definitely, yeah, that's Katie. One of us has art, one of us has books, and one of us has nothing. Nothing. Right? I have have read 75 books so far this year. Oh, and yes, insane. I keep track every year. That's, that's, I'm a nerd. Nuts. Yeah. Where do you no. get your list? What do you mean? Where do I get my, where do I? Yeah. Are you a New York Times uh, bestseller person? I go, I have the Libby app for my local library. Yeah. And then I'm also a member of my local book co-op and I buy books there. Yep. Um, okay. You know, reading you read, is, reading is read fundamental. Multiple, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you read multiple books at the same time? Yes, because I also I oh. I do read some audiobooks because I I listen to them while I walk my dogs and yes that is right. considered reading because it's 100%. what works in my schedule. Um, so I yeah, read I'll audiobooks. I listen to audio. <laughs> That's like saying I'm watching the podcast. <laughs> are we not on video right now? Ryan? <laughs> yeah, but the words are. I, part I, part I understand, <laughs> but I mean, you know, no, I count it. I count it. I, I count it. Yeah, I no, I, I will. I will. Um, I usually have like one trashy novel one nonfiction, and then one business book going at any given oh, nice. time okay um and then i'm also known to bring books with me on my travel and then just leave the ones i don't <laughs> mm. you get a chapter in do yeah, you uh, we'll leave are this you for the cleaning crew. as you uh, as, uh, as a book reader do you feel that you have to finish the book or are not you with library open? books okay um with library books i'll just return them because that's easy um yeah. if it's a book that I own. I typically will at least gonna, skim my way to the end. You're going to grind it out. I'm going to grind it <laughs> I out. I paid my um, 20 bucks, bitch. I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> well, sometimes it's also like, you know, I feel like with physical media too, it's like somebody told me to read this for a reason or somebody gave it mm-hmm. to me for a reason. Right. Maybe it's page 664 that that's on. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll commit. Okay. Maybe. All right. Maybe. All right. Sometimes not. <laughs> 53 years ago. There was a person who was inside of an agency called the EEOC, Hmm. and they didn't like what was happening at a company in New York. It was a major uh, New York trade company, uh, Union Local 580. They didn't like what was happening with their hiring process. Hmm. So they put a claim out. They took them to court, the whole bit. So anyway, this is is in 1971. So it was a wide discrimination claim against black and Hispanic workers, right. iron workers, I should say, in recruitment, training, and referrals for jobs that were coming through the union. In 1978, the court approved a consent judgment that barred local 580 from discriminating based on race. Uh, yeah. Okay, So they had a court-appointed judgment that they needed to keep track. 
of their hiring process and they needed to monitor this. They're hiring, how many people they're interviewing, how many they're hiring, what race, yeah. nationality, stuff. Yeah. the whole bit, right? Like they had to track everything. This is from 78 on. Well, mm -hmm. they haven't done that very well and they've been tracked and then they, when they weren't being audited, they didn't do it, right? Or at least they don't have the records. So anyhow, there's a, a court appointed special master. I hate that name for this mm, special yeah, master. Yeah. Just the master. Mm, yeah, doesn't do it well. Just sounds, it sounds. It sounds dated. Like yeah, it's like yeah. it's it's like when I it say moist like in front moist. of my wife, she does, gets does, does, really does, yeah. pissed off. I was thinking it sounded antiquated, but sure. Yeah, antiquated. Does, same does the job come with a whip? <laughs> so David Raff, right of Raff and Becker. Anyway, he he. He, Local 580 is probably in some trouble, I'm guessing, needs, needs, for not producing like, the records. Um, Local 580 needs tell a you, PR team. I, well, listen, I'm I'm a union wife, and uh, yeah. I can tell you from dealing with my husband's local, um, everything is still done on paper, 100%. by hand, and it drives me bananas. Oh, yeah. Um, so notes. I'm guessing, I, I yeah. don't know if I know anybody, in, I do know some iron workers in the city, so I don't want to offend them, but um, I'm guessing 580 has, yeah, it, there might be post-it notes. You know, yeah, about Jason, your... Jason Everbrook would say digital transformation. Digital, yeah. No, we're talking about carbon copies and uh, there, yeah, there's fax machines somewhere. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's all get on computers. Yeah. There's this thing. Uh, plug it in. It's called a word yeah. processor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Word Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lotus yeah. Notes. Yeah. Yes. All there works. we go. Yeah. Uh, Clippy. Clippy is somewhere. Yeah. Let's move over to Microsoft Word. Yeah. Done. Okay. Hey, Clippy. That sounds great. Perfect. Alrighty. Uh, Alphabet executives uh, donning Halloween costumes faced questions from concerned employees at an all hands meeting on Wednesday, day after election, following comments on the company's earning call suggesting that more cost cuts are coming. So, first hmm. of all, they had an earnings call. <laughs> On Halloween? On Halloween. So that sounds... Just, uh, okay. So there's that. Then they have an all-team, uh, you know, an all-hands meeting the next day. All right. So I, I looked at this two ways. So the well, first thing that I thought... This is on CNBC, but... So the first thing I thought is, okay, file this under smart people doing stupid shit. Check. Then the next file was know thy audience. So, you know, I, th I think it's a good thing for employees to listen to to earnings calls. Mm -hmm. I think it actually sure. should be, I should do, they should, should be get paid to listen to earnings calls. So they know what's going on with the business. Um, and I think management should always encourage them to do that. Uh, however, I think showing up as a grim reaper on a, on a call. <laughs> we're about cost cutting. <laughs> and we're talking uh... about cost cutting. That's just not a good look. That's just, mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's not a good look. So there's some scheduling stuff in there. Yeah, the okay. IR team probably should have talked to like the HR or whoever was in charge mm -hmm. of scheduling the all hands Comms. and mm -hmm. yeah, internal co and at a company like Alphabet, I would assume they have enough layers. Yeah. That, Why can't um, they just have a fun culture and get dressed up? Well, the yeah, you they can. can. <laughs> they can do that on different days, though. Yeah, yeah. Earnings call they have to happen. That's a Wall Street yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, got it. Uh, Halloween, you know, okay, do some stuff for Halloween. Great, check. Got it. Um, all hands meetings? Okay, cool. Got it. But, like, maybe uh, scheduling these things in yeah. a different way. Yeah, like, mm. uh, you know, in New Jersey and parts of the country, we celebrate Mischief Night on October 30th. Ah, okay. Um, Ryan, mm -hmm. do you guys do that? Yeah. You? Well, yeah I, I, haven't gone, big... I haven't gone out. Yeah, I haven't. Years, it's been a long you know. time. And I know, I think it's called Goosey Night in some area. It's, yeah, it's a regional thing. But, you know, you they don't have that in Texas? No, it's. It's region. I think it's like Michigan and New Jersey, and like part oh. of the Northeast. It's very okay. Niche. Um, but you know, like you could have done your all hands on October thirtieth and celebrated Mischief Night or something, and like that was when you dressed up and then did earnings the next day or, you know, something like that. Uh, just someone being just separate. On this, I think, uh, Katie. I think you nailed it. All of these different people getting them in a room or on a call and going. Are this thing okay. called Slack or? <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a modern technology. It's called texting. Yes. <laughs> just yeah. getting these people mm -hmm. together. So I'm reading it going, just doesn't seem like the team was together on this. No, uh, yeah. no, a little well, disparate in terms of organization and planning. There you go. All right. See, Alphabet. I, I just look at it as, as a fun company and you guys are boring. Anyhow, <laughs> something even more boring than that. Oh. 
but can't wait. Slow news week, yeah, apparently. It, it is <laughs> a slow news week. Right. Great, great lead. Great, great <laughs> you lead know, in. My, oh, my, my story God. Is really you, you think that story sucked? All right. <laughs> yeah, listen to this one. No, this, so this, is actually, this is actually well needed if you're a healthcare person. So uh, healthcare is overly complex, to say the least, right? Like you go through open enrollment. You got to you know, pull up your checklist and see the column A, column B, column C, compare your plans and all that stuff. Um, there's an issue with healthcare. We know that it's open enrollment season. And so I thought, why not bring this story to the lovely group that's here on the call? The challenge with healthcare has been outside of cost and all that stuff is that plan members do not use their plan accordingly for what they selected, right? They use it when they go to the ER. They use it if they have to go to um, to the, uh, what do you call those clinics? The uh, ur- urgent, urgent care, care clinics. Yeah, urgent, cl- ur- urgent care. They That's when they use it, when they have to. But they're not using it for routine, you know, medical or healthcare maintenance. They're not using it for any of that stuff, right? Preventative care. Um, so Aetna launched, back in 2018, they launched something called Simple Pay with the idea that they're going to create a process or a plan in healthcare that's easier for people to to take part in whether right. it's payments whether it's you know invoicing whatever it is right just to use it so now it's gone mainstream now they're pushing it out into the masses and since it's open enrollment time it makes sense but the big difference here simple pay you don't have any upfront costs. It gets rid of um, co-insurance. It gets rid of deductibles, all of that stuff. So all, all great for for people. Uh, and you don't have any upfront payments when you go to get the treatment, whether mm-hmm. it's emergency, whether it's preventative, regular care, or just you yeah. need something done. Uh, payment plans are over 12 to 18 months and they're interest-free. So whatever your portion is, you know, 500 bucks. You have 12 to 18 months to pay that back, and they invoice you monthly on that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. I like the okay. deal. I'm not sold on it because I'm sure there's something I'm missing there. But yeah, I like the idea, fees. making it yeah. more more available for people. And <laughs> Now, Katie already knows about this because it has impacted her life this week. Uh-oh. A 600-member New York Times Tech Guild... <sighs> Walked off the job at midnight on Monday for <laughs> that'd be the day before the election. Yes, and uh, for an open ended uh, is an open ended strike. Mm-hmm. What they're really fighting for is uh, remote roles and hybrid hybrid work protections and pay equity. This was reported by the Wall Street. <laughs> Can you get it out? It was who were who were thrilled <laughs> to report on this. I'm sure. Giddy. I am. I am. I will say. Um, so another nerd alert here. I do the New York Times crossword puzzle every single day. As you should. Um, and I have now broken my streak in in solidarity of the tech workers because I do think that what they're Aww. fighting for is a hundred percent legitimate. Hundred um, percent. I open ended strike though is mildly terrifying. Um, uh, I think my brain that, is starting you do to know atrophy that, uh, already. They're not tracking your your strike on Wordle. And I know. you just yeah. ruined I all listen, this. Yeah. You know. yeah I'm but, trying, I'm but trying you're to divest of bad, you know, bad relationships. But you're just so. a great person. <laughs> I'm, no. Hard in so, but in I'm solidarity, trying. I stopped Wordle. I did. I did. I, I did. Wordle. I do all of them. It's yes. like really sad every morning. I do all no, of them. My wife. Uh, my Gotten wife, into my... strands. I like strands. Oh, I don't know that one. That's oh, that's new. the newest one. Mm. Is that? That's not the one with letters. It's like a word search, kind yeah. of, and you have to find the words and like, yeah. This is what really okay. intelligent people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hardly. Hardly <laughs> intelligent. People with too much time on their hands, maybe? I, I don't know. Maybe. I wonder how fast the Wall Street Journal put that article out. Like, <laughs> like they, had the they might have had it pre-written. You know how yeah, obituaries yeah, yeah. are already, oh, like, celebrity point. obituaries are already under good construction? Point. Mm-hmm. They yeah, might have been just... waiting for this one. <laughs> Um, just had to go to a quick, quick run by the ethics board and to the yeah. editors and upload. But so. you know, kidding aside, if you're going to strike, you historically do it when you have the most leverage. Now, now that we know the election results, this story might not age well. That's my only fear. I did especially... hear something happened with connections or was it Wordle the day after the election? Right. People were not happy about the choice, I believe, of yeah. answers. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, that's, yeah. Again, it's impacting a lot of people. But again, if you're going to strike and you, and they're not striking for more money. That's that's not. Uh, I mean, at least that wasn't listed. They're they're striking because they want remote and hybrid and flexibility and pay equity. Those aren't bad things. Like like I'm all you for know. autonomy. But, yeah, you know. like you know. But yeah, I've always believed. Like, so I think you're right. Striking to get remote work. To get remote work and hybrid work guarantees. I think protections. Yes. I think that's, yeah, that's protections. exactly right. It's, it's, well, it's, listen, it's, in the return to office, you know, battle royale, I could see why you would want to, you know, protect your flexibility. That's right. Mm. It's 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 that the, the remote because some of them are remote and hybrid, yeah. uh-huh. but they just want the the protections that they can. Well, stay they remote. don't need to be in the newsroom. You know, mm. these these are the puzzle creators. Mm. These are right. not, yeah. Right. Right. The solution is but I, go to work. Katie, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Wall Street Journal had their finger on the button, just, <laughs> just waiting. <laughs> just like Ryan did right there, where he's like, yeah. moving on. Like, 1201, go to 1201. Work, shut your mouth and go to work. How about they went, that? They went on Get strike paid. at 12, and 1201, the article went live. There you yeah. go. All right, last story. On the news side is uh, OpenAI CEO Sam Alton. He was on a podcast, uh, VC 30 Minutes, whatever the heck it's called. And uh, he basically advocated for a hiring approach that prioritizes talent over age, emphasizing the importance of managing a diverse workforce that it combines both experienced professionals and promising young talent. This was on MSN.com. Uh, so when I first read this, headline the first thing i thought is like um i thought i thought that's what we were doing <laughs> I, I thought that was what we were doing already like uh like i thought that was the, the bit so it's it's funny but it's not funny actually because silicon valley has long since valued younger talent and he said it out loud mm-hmm. oops <laughs> well and there's some of that cost cutting too um that is that is correct you know what uh, yeah, so, more people said things out loud. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. Isn't and that he's... how we got to where we are, Ryan? Oh Probably. yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that's a good thing. Probably. Ryan, are build... Ryan, are you gonna build a wall? I'm gonna build uh, <laughs> twelve foot, twelve foot, dude. Like, do you know the cartels already have like their the wall is not gonna stop me? But... No, no, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Calls cartels of twenty years of a higher start on this deal. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. building a wall. Yeah, yeah. You, you keep the Girl Scouts out. Says the Texan. Mm-hmm. All right. We ready to talk some acquisitions here? No, we're going to let Katie go. Oh. No. She and we got a choir this week? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> we can talk about it if you want to. Sure, why not? I must have right. missed this. Let's do All some right. acquisitions. You go first. All right. Big time expands platform with work rails acquisition to enhance CPQ and workflow automation for professional services. Is that bigtime.net? I guess they couldn't get the .com. Anywho, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big win uh, in terms of the acquisition. It's a big win for professional services firms. That's their clientele, both companies' clientele. Uh, they'll be more efficient and profitable because it's basically making them more efficient. So, good acquisition. I like it. I like there it. You go. All right. Salesforce is on the board. Now, they haven't fully announced this acquisition. Right. Um, it's, so back in September, they announced that they've signed a definitive agreement to right. acquire 10X or 10, is it 10X? Is that how you say it? T-E-N-Y-X. I call it 10X. Anyway, it's a- uh, It's your it's story. An, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it up. It's an AI-powered voice agent, mainly used in customer service. I remember service. this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they're supposed. The reason I'm bringing it back up is because they're supposed to announce it uh, this quarter, this upcoming third quarter, which is, uh, fi- I'm sorry, in fiscal year end for Salesforce is October 31st. Oh, really? So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So they're supposed to bring huh. it up or announce it now. They haven't. So wanted to put it back on our radar because I think this is actually pretty significant. Um, I think they're going to carry it over to the next year. I. Uh, we mean the the the, the, the announcement. Acquisition. Yeah, no, no, they've already announced it, but the acquisition itself. The closing the clo- of the acquisition? Oh, the closing. Yeah. Oh, I, have, I have no clue. Yeah. Did they do their um, earnings already? Yeah, that's that would they, have been. If yeah, because they, they, yeah, they did that. Up to, yeah. yeah, yeah. They might just so, sneak it in. I, I, this might be, this is one of your type of stories, William, <clears throat> where mm, okay. could, could be, couldn't be. 
I, I, but I think they have a play here in talent acquisition. Oh yeah, they, they, do. they own twenty two percent of the CRM market already. They integrate with Bullhorn deeply. Mm-hmm. They integrate with Pardot deeply. Mm-hmm. They're the king of automation, right? They've got all the makings to come in and do, and a lot of companies use them. They use them for talent acquisition. They use them as an ATS, or they combine it with. And you're talking about Tiniex? Uh, no, no, Salesforce. Salesforce. Salesforce has tried to come into HR and recruiting specifically, and they have six, yeah. six different times. Yeah, they haven't all, been successful. All failed. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think, I think. This is another push. I, I think with maybe with with this with this company now they're able to do a lot of different things. So the the, the like struggle it. has been you have to build off the force dot com uh, platform. Correct. So if you're going to do it like you build an ATS or whatever the bit is, you got to build off their platform. Uh, so and and a lot of people have tried that and yeah. uh, not not fared well. So yeah. good good luck for them. Yeah. Now let me roll another one that we've talked about before. Past yeah. you. One First Advantage one. completes acquisition of Sterling yeah. Check for $2.2 billion. Globalnewswire.com. We reported on it because they announced it in mm-hmm. March. However, now, the this week, they've actually closed the transaction. Correct. It's completed, et cetera. Now, I want your take, both yours and Katie's on this. How close is that to the monopoly rule hmm. with those two being combined? It was already subject to review. Right. Um, full disclosure, first advantage is a client of mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> they've already gone through all the processes, obviously, which is yeah, why yeah, it was yeah. announced way back right. when. And, um, you know, they were seen as distinct enough in their offerings. Okay. Uh, and first advantage also rebranded as part of They did do a little bit of a, a rebrand. Oh, cool. Reflective of this. So. Okay. Well, let's, I, you know, when putting those two together, first mm-hmm. of all, it's fantastic mm-hmm. uh, uh, for all the customers involved. It's just, I wonder, because they're so big. They are so them, big. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like, like yeah, there's a ton. There's thousands of mm-hmm. smaller ones. So maybe. Right. That, I think they historically, that... they've focused on different verticals, which ah. is part of what made First Advantage and Sterling distinct enough that they could come together. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I mean, right. Huge global reach. Well, it's, I mean, when we, we saw it in, in, I think it was March 3rd when we did the barf on this one, mm-hmm. we saw it, we're like, oh, this is cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, this is just great for everybody around. This one, once it finally got complete, I looked back into it. I'm like, okay, out of all the global players, how yeah. big does this make them? And it, obviously it doesn't come close to the threshold. So mm-hmm. good. Right. Good there for them. Go. All, all right. right we're on to some research stuff. This is, this right, is the fun part, Katie. If you could stay. We're just Next, getting started we're with the just fun part, started. guys. Yeah, yeah. Right, we got, we have some fun. stupidity to talk about today. All right. Confessions, I like stupidity. Confessions of an office workhorse study. It's on sidehustles.com. This is a study. I can't make this shit up. This is fascinating because it relies on how people see themselves and their value. And historically, mm-hmm. I've always thought that people overvalue the things they do. So I, I, I've always come into this like, you think you're adding a lot of value. I don't think you're adding the same amount of value. So I've been very cynical as it relates to this. They've got a whole study about it. So 61% of, I'll give you three stats. 61% of employees consider themselves work horses with Gen X, 64% being the most likely to identify as work horses. And Gen Z, 52%, the least likely. That's one step. 55% of workhorses feel that their contributions are undervalued. 55%, same same number, uh, of workhorses feel stuck in their current positions, and 51% feel burnt out. Mm. So, first of all, what do y'all think about the uh, workhorses? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. I think that spoke volumes. <laughs> it did. Yeah. This is this is almost going to be as good as my next one. All right. Okay. Go. 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 All right. So, Gen Z, you ready for this? Gen I'm Z ready. stressing the fuck out of their managers. Yeah. So yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> This They're using different how words. How old are their managers? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They're it, millennials. Because no, 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 no. If it's Gen X again. <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot to say there, but yeah. you know. Oh, hundred percent. So this gets into challenges Funny. managers face when overseeing Gen Z employees, right? Setting the stage mm-hmm. here. So this okay. caught my attention because it highlights 
the different generations, which we love to talk about. Oh, yeah. Anyhow, I read this as managing Gen Z requires more time and resources, okay, leading to increased stress and frustration among managers. That was <laughs> how I wrote it. Listen to these stats, though. This is where okay. I think Katie's going to chime in. Eighteen yes. percent of managers have considered quitting due to the stress of managing Gen Z employees. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Additionally, fifty-one percent have experienced frustration, and forty-four percent have felt stressed in this context of why are they in my office? I feel like this; these numbers could have just been like. 10 years ago, this study could have come out. Uh-huh. 20 oh, years ago, yeah, this yeah, study yeah. could have come out. Oh, yeah. The numbers 100%. would have been exactly the same. It's like young career entrants, difficult to manage, require <laughs> more of their managers. Just <laughs> recycle that article. I Just think this was written about millennials in 2009. It was, it was, it was like, written about Gen X. And, it was. And, uh, it yeah. was. Yeah. This yeah. is same the stuff. stupidity that's out there in the world of research. Like People are getting paid to do this. I know. Uh, well, the thing is, is I I can see the challenge, but it's it's the same challenge that other people have had before, and you get over the challenge. If you're a true leader, you get over the challenge because you're like, oh, okay. You what if you're be... a true researcher? You go back and see if this has been done to death. But that's right. That's, <laughs> that's really, my problem with I mean, it. It's like really difficult to manage people from different generations. No, like, I think what no no what this is is the managers are not receiving the training they need. And yes. Because that's part of this, is that onboarding and training, we're doing less of. That's right. Manager training, yeah. pretty much non-ex- non-existent. So you're supposed to be taking time out of your day to help out, you know, these people who need help. Yeah, who just didn't fair. get the They didn't get the training or the onboarding they needed. You didn't get it. And the yeah. cycle is just vicious and repeating itself. I have a fucking so. headache. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, it is specifically the barf that has made me unhirable. <laughs> Ever, if I need this to is what job. made you unhirable <laughs> all these years. Right? I, think, I think working with me probably had some of it. Think, you know. there, someone's gonna look back, and be like, "How are you gonna work with our employee population?" Mm. Not. I think between the three of us, though, when was the last time any of us had like a mm. corporate a job job? Yeah, it's been a, a job job. It's, it's uh, no, it's I been a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah it's right, a now. new generation by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. Out. I did when I when I when I was at the. This is by two thousand eight. So. A long time ago, I made one of my interns cry, and I, not on purpose, not on purpose, obviously. <laughs> but I, she, she was, you know, she was, yeah. Although young millennial cat. workforce entrant. Okay, young young millennial, she, right out of TCU, and great gal. She was writing stuff for me, and it was an open office, right? So four walls, lots of chairs, whatever. She pulls up a chair <laughs> an right at my desk. And uh, she gives me the article, and I'm reading it. And I'm just looking down, reading it, going, "This she is." She printed the word. out a copy to give to you because it's that long Correct. ago. Correct. <laughs> 2008. Did it have double, it all the... It's double spaced. Did it, did it Times have New holes? Roman, yeah. size 12 font. Dude, this is so great. So did it have holes on the side of the paper? <laughs> yeah, like 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 uh, was <laughs> it dot matrix? matrix yeah, printer? dot matrix. <laughs> so uh, so she's sitting across me, and I'm not looking at her. I'm looking down. And I'm like. This is the fucking worst shit I've ever read in red my fucking pen, life. Red pen in hand. <laughs> no, I didn't have a pen. I'm like, are you fucking high? Like, oh, this God. is crazy. And I'm not looking at her. And then all of a sudden, I can hear her sniffling. And I'm like, and I looked up, and she's on full, full on fucking makeup ruin the whole bit. I'm like, oh shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you were sitting there the whole time. <laughs> I, uh, first of all, I thought touch, touch of autism. Anywho, uh, so here's the deal. I'm sorry. I I should have asked you how you like your feedback. <laughs> so, great gal. I mean, we're still friends to this day because we can laugh about it now. But I, that's something like with another Gen X person mm. that would have been just normal. This is why you he asks me all the time. How do you like your feedback when he I says do. that? I do. That's where that comes from. You know, know there's exactly. something. Have you ever watched oh, yeah. that movie Wine yeah. Country with yeah. like Amy mm. Poehler? And it's may I offer you some feedback? Is like the yes. running <laughs> joke throughout yes. the movie. May yeah. I offer you? Some, and you know yeah. she's just going to tell you you're being hundred <clears> percent. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Rachel Crash. Right. Yeah. Right, we through some two, money, two fundings. All right, Craft with two T's, a New York. A uh, city-based provider of a platform built on decentralized infrastructure for the modern workforce. Raised uh, $2 million okay. in seed funding. 
That's craft with two T's dot X, Y, Z. Is it with a K or a C? No, it's with a C. It's like I think Prince. I'm hungry at this point. So. It's like a Prince song. <laughs> Did I hear a Niner in there? Can I have <laughs> some macaroni and cheese? <laughs> so, so anyhow, it's actually, go to their website because mm-hmm. it is actually really cool looking, but they're building a frictionless thing for work, for decentralized infrastructure, the platform. Mm. It's actually really, you know, outside of all the jokes, it's actually really cool. Um, and it's enabling kind of a modern workforce. So, cool. anyhow, that's craft. With two T's. Beautiful. Next, Algorized, an AI platform uh, pioneering advanced people sensing and positioning software. Has people raised, sensing. That's a lot I of know, P's. I know. I know. $4.3 million in seed funding. This is on vcnewsdaily.com, uh, so you can look at there. People sensing, uh, not not as sexy. So people sensing, think of like you're in your Tesla and you and you can see cars on the side of you with mm-hmm. your little boxes of cars sensing in a in a industrial uh, situation. So somebody's creeping up behind me in a warehouse. Right, you can see people in the back of my head. Oh no, it's no. This is I, when you go to the website, you're gonna be you're trip out. So like people sensing, not as sexy. They can do people sensing through walls. Oh, Big Brother <laughs> is watching, and this is oh, dude, it's so <laughs> awesome, terrifying. So, like, it's like you're on your forklift, and you can see that there's people over there behind the rolls of whatever uh, it is. From a safety oh. perspective, it no, makes sense. No, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. It just, I'm thinking yeah. I'm in my closet hiding from the serial killer, <laughs> and they can see me from the next house. Yeah, no, that, yeah, you're, that, yeah your panic room is no longer no, that, safe. <laughs> no, that, those are thermal scopes. I don't know if you'll yeah. ever look through. We're changing the subject, but those, thermal scopes on rifles. Mm-hmm. You can drive around your neighborhood and see people in their house. I need to build yeah. a bunker. <laughs> I <laughs> feel like we should edit. But that it out. has There's one. It's like nine thousand dollars. Pay he paid not, roughly nine thousand dollars for a thermal scope, and we drove mm-hmm. around my neighborhood mm-hmm. just Texas looking at is people. Very in their house. different than New Jersey. So awesome. Yeah. It is. <laughs> you can see everything. It's great. It's so How awesome. How are we fifty Anyhow. states operating as one? Is what oh, I ask yeah. myself most days. Well, that's the thing. We're not operating. As yeah. One. Right. yeah. Right, it, go. It's like I'll operate uh, very efficiently after this. Algorized. Yeah. So it's A L G O R I Z E. Cool. Well, congrats to Kraft and Algorized. Right. Right. Well, right. Raising they, money is tough. It's crazy year to raise money. So. A hundred percent. People sensing. Nah. People mm. sensing and decentralized. Well, there all you right. go. We, we are done. We're all wrapped up for today. We we, we have. We, we barfed. So, Katie, first time on. A little different format today, but... Uh, I had a blast. There you go. <laughs> I here. really did. It was a good way to end the week. She's going to yeah. go swimming in the ocean tonight. And, um, I did think about it. There is know? a great white off of New Jersey right now, though. He's oh, like 1,600 no pounds. Uh, is that, uh, what's her name? No, it's not Mary Jane no, or Mary yeah, not, Ellen okay. or whatever that one is. This is a this is a boy, which is oh, a come scarier. on, bring him in. He's, mm. um, he, he can't be he can't be uh, really aggressive. We've had a lot of whales and dolphins lately. <laughs> they actually found a butchered dolphin by my house the other day. Oh. Someone actually like like the FBI is involved. It's anyway. Wow, the world is terrifying. But thank you for you this. You live it in was... a harmful place. <laughs> <laughs> you got the, the ocean you got is to... scary. <laughs> so it turns out, I think. I think the deep ocean is scarier to it's scarier to me than space. Yeah, like we might know more about space. What's yeah. what's down there, like in the deep ocean part, like yeah. a really really deep ocean mm-hmm. part. That whatever the hell is down there, mm-hmm. I'm more. Have you guys of that. ever watched Spooky Lake Month? It just concluded, but no. I'm gonna plug Spooky Lake Month real quick. So oh. here, fun thing to look at on TikTok or Instagram, whatever you prefer. Yeah. Spooky Lake Month every October. Um, this woman, her name is Geo. She actually has a book out about it now. She talks oh. about all the terrifying bodies of water. Oh, very um, nice. Every day she does a different one. Little, oh, little like video. Right. Go back and watch this October. You'll learn a Spooky, lot of stuff. What's it called? Spooky Lake Month. It's well, every October she does I'm it. I'm down. I'm down. Share it with your like kids. This. It's very no. cool. Lake Baikal. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of Lake Baikal? Uh-uh. It's in like Siberia, I think. Yeah. Like, terif- terrifying things exist on this planet. <laughs> it's just bodies, oh. bodies, uh, bodies down there. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna have to look it up so there. there you go. We we have a small little lake by me that I won't go on by myself. Really? It's, it's small. Is it haunted? I mean, it feels haunted. You have to go back <laughs> in this path, and there's like a campground Ooh. on the one side, but it always has fog on it, mm. and it's only seven foot deep. 
Mm. I'm gonna take so, you to Caddo Lake when we when you come back to Texas. Yeah. I'm gonna take you to Caddo Lake. I don't like that. Where your lake house is? No, uh, <laughs> it's the only it's the only uh, natural lake in Texas. Oh, every like other lake in Texas. One lake in Texas. One, one. What's wrong and it's with in you East people? Texas. Every, well, we have like 600 lakes, so we're good. I live Anyhow. on a lake. I don't know if y'all know that. I didn't by know the that. Beach. No. I live ah. on a lake by the beach. Hmm. It's so frackish. It's on both sides? It's frackish. <laughs> okay. I live so on a it, peninsula. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I live. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's Very frackish. Nice. And uh, right now it's real low because it hasn't rained in two yeah. months. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they control it with a flume. So, so, so cool. seawater mm-hmm. water can come in. Mm-hmm. So you've got some animals in there that can do fresh and seawater. We got Same a lot of snapping turtles. They lay their eggs ah! in, my, in my yard every year. Oh, Dude, I wonderful. love those animals that, that can actually mm-hmm. do both. Yeah. Well, there's nature a lot of them. Nature is amazing. <laughs> it is. They so adapt. From technology yeah. to nature. We, we've, got to end, we, we've got to end it there. I love animals <laughs> right. that can do both. 